going through this tune I've just finished, which is probably going to be for my own label, it's called Mirador, um, kind of uh, a nod to the old sort of um, Space Invader, J Magic kind of uh, sound, and uh, yeah, wait, I'll give you a little blast. <laughs> Basically, it's sort of a you know a loop-driven tune. Um, started with uh, this. As the original sample, um, I can't actually remember where it's from. I've cut it up again, and what I've done with that is uh, um, EQ it a bit to get out the bits that I really want um, and then I've got some camel fat on it which is doing a flanger and it's got an LFO on the uh, filter cover and a little touch of distortion as well and then I've got this handy plugin called CMX which basically uh, accentuates the stereo because um, I wanted to get quite a wide uh, sound with that loop and then uh, I think yeah just another little EQ at the end and then what I've done is layer it up with uh, yeah just something which is sort of just to bring out a bit more of the low end which you can see here on uh, the multimeter which is my sort of favourite thing for I mean it's it's down to choice what you like to uh look at, you know, and I like I, I like the way multimeter sort of explains what's going on. Um some people don't like it. Some people like the waves one or whatever. But that one suits me. Basically, yeah, I've just split it up a few times and done some different things with the filters and got some different ones in the intro with the loop. Yeah, on this one I've basically got camel fat doing something a lot lower down so um you know it doesn't ever go above the, the sort of middle 500 or so and then when you put it together with the top you just get quite a nice sort of flat you know flat uh eq curve that's um sent to a bus which basically got a really tight reverb on it to give it a little more stereo and then I've got it compressed um, to basically I like to set up a sort of ghost channel which uh, I'll send um, side chaining to and it's always muted so you're not actually hearing it but it's basically just for the compressor to bounce off um, just to let the uh, kick and snare sort of come through a bit more. Yeah, reason for uh, having a sort of silent sidechain channel is because uh, uh, if you say uh, set your sidechain to your actual kick and then you know you have a point where maybe you have the kick in the breakdown and you don't want sidechaining it's going to be side chaining to that and you have to start automating plugins to turn off and on um, so I find it's a lot better just having this channel that's not playing um, so you can then you know you can you can do your beat edits separately and you can you can get it to do whatever you want you know separately from the actual drums next yeah I've got the I've got the sub which is basically sort of following how the loop is cut up and um, that is just a I think it's just the default EXS24 sub and that's obviously uh, completely mono um, and that's that's bounced but that is sidechain um, to the same sidechain channel as before and what I've done with that to sort of um, bring out the sort of warm frequency above it is add this um, sort of stereo synth bass on top of it which basically 
occupies like just the space just above it where the kick and snare are and that side chain is as well quite hard um, because it's sort of hitting that same area but without that the track would sound really thin I think that one was just uh, that was just a sort of preset I just went through a few and uh, basically yeah that one that one sort of did what I wanted it to do um, it's got a bit of stereo as well which you know people all say you shouldn't do that but to be honest I think it sounds good and I don't really like paying attention to what people say because you know usually it's just down to whether you think it sounds good or not I mean you know if you've got a really wide sub you might have some problems but anything just above it I reckon you can get away with a little bit of width so yeah I'll try and have that in there um, because yeah it will just it'll give this illusion of uh, it sounding fatter when it's a bit wide <laughs> If I was to take that out and just have the sub, it would sound, sound a lot thinner, there's no definition in the bass, but with it in, you know, you can really hear what the sub's doing, um, even at a very low volume. Yes, so on top of the, on top of those two bases I've got something just to bring out the first hit which is basically just a sample from a uh, virus sample pack which uh, logistics gave me I think it was some, something uh, free online that someone did just loads of samples from the virus synth and uh, yeah, that pretty much has a little bit of EQ, again a bit of compression. It's got a bit of um, bit of Camel Crush on it, which uh, is a free plugin, um, and uh, yeah, it's just it's nice sort of uh, overdrivey kind of distortion. Um, so it brings out the top end a bit. There's actually quite a, <laughs> quite a few EQs on this. Um, you know, as well, people say you shouldn't boost things massively, but to be honest, if it sounds good, then do it. You know, there's no hard and fast rules. Again, I've got this, uh, yeah, this um, really tight reverb on it, just to give it a bit more stereo. And a bit of CMX as well, probably a bit too much, but there we go. And it's subtle this, but... It sort of makes, uh... It sort of makes the snare sound like it's, you know, there's sort of something breathing there. Um, I like little, little things like that. Another thing, uh which is out of a sample pack as well which is a sort of old sort of Ed Rush and Optic kind of bass sound just yeah just playing one note um, that would have been done in the EXS as well and that just adds to the texture as well <laughs> You know, subtle things like that just sort of, uh, you know, really make make a tune subconsciously interesting. Basically, yeah, just got a, uh, you know, sort of stock kick and snare that I sort of spent some time working on. And, um, yeah, I mean, uh, different tunes, you want a different kind of sound, but with this I didn't really want that sort of really breaky, jungly sound, you know, I just wanted to try and keep it, um, you know, kind of housey, but, you know, that's not to say there's not breaks in there, because they add, like, a texture that you just can't, you can't get that 
I don't know. I think it's really hard to make a drum and bass tune without some sort of breaks in there. Um, it's got something, you know, with a bit of, sort of high mids for the shuffle, and then uh, sport with a bit of mid range and top end. Yeah, I got this. I uh, can't remember where this hi hat's from. Um, No, I don't know, it's bounced. But anyway, um, yeah, basically just got that, you know, sitting quite high up. But it's not too too harshly high past. Because um, I think you do need a bit of body in hi hats. I think people make that mistake of, you know, cutting it too high. Uh, and there's this shaker from uh, a Matrix sample pack. Sort of a uh, mid rangey percussion thing with no top end on it, just to um, add a bit of uh, add a bit of low end between the hits, um, and then yeah, sort of splashy top end break that's quite wide. Yeah, with this splash break, you know, I find it's getting the top end right is quite difficult. Um, you know, top end and real low end are the hard parts to get right. And uh, yeah, with this, what I've done is I've I've taken out some of the sort of um, unpleasant frequencies with an EQ, and then uh, I've got it side chained quite hard to um, to that same side channel, side chain channel from before. And there's another EQ getting rid of some more stuff at the top that I didn't like. Um, you know, that's that's all just down to personal preference. I mean, there's certain frequencies that just seem to... I don't know whether I'm going deaf, but they really hurt my ears. And, uh, you know, try and get rid of those. Um, yeah, then again, I've got this uh, tight reverb to give it some width. Um, and then... Yeah, a little bit more compression, which is going to the snare, just to uh, get, you know, sort of sound like it's breathing a bit. This is quite uh, important as well, like just to add a bit of um, length and kind of colour to the snare. It's got a, uh, a sort of clap that I've added some reverb to, um, and. Sort of added a lot of boost on the top end. All the other things I've got sort of in the uh, drum loop, little bits, bits and pieces to add sort of, you know, a bit of interest to the to the drum loop once it's all playing. I'll just get it all playing together. Take out the splash, you can hear what's going on a little bit more. So it's quite, quite full, um, and the kick's quite loud, which you know you wouldn't necessarily do in every tune. It just, it just seemed to work with this one. Um, again, there's no hard and fast rules. You know, sometimes your kick will be a little quieter. Uh, some. Sometimes it will even be louder than the snare, you know, it just really depends on the sound and the content of the tune. Yeah, another thing I sort of uh, added in to get that kind of disco sound was um, just a real short guitar sample, um, which just gives it that kind of Daft Punk kind of flavour, you know, and it just, it makes it sound... Uh, yeah, make the sound fast. Uh, yeah, I've got this every every four bars as well. I've got like a a tuned a tuned kind of rise thing. That's basically I did this with um, Effectrix, and it's got the tonal delay plugin on it, and then you can set it to a certain key and um, set the width and the feedback and everything I mean without it 
it would just just be a normal sort of white noise sound. But if you add a bit of a key to it, you know, it sounds a little more interesting. And then what I've done with that is uh, I've given it a really long reverb. Um, I've actually got a I've got an impulse response pack, which is basically um, it's it's sort of sample from a load of old like lexicon reverbs and stuff. And uh, you know a lot of these things you can find for free online. Um, you know where people people sample sort of. Uh, all these old reverb units and um, yeah you get some really nice ones sort of better than the default um, space designer ones and then again that's that's really side chained as most stuff is because it's that kind of a tune generally like I make I'll make something simple like that out of just some white noise out of like the ESP synth or something and then uh, you know, side chain it really hard to make it do that, and uh, again, you know, uh, with the EQ, just get rid of the bits you really don't like. But then I've got something with a bit more of a kind of analog sounding thing, which has got a bit of uh, that tight widening reverb on it, and it's being sent to a bus which I've got that same lexicon reverb on and I've obviously sent a few things there with some compression after the reverb just because sometimes you don't want to set up the same reverb over and over again and obviously it can you know affect your CPU so if you just uh, set up a bus with just a nice reverb you know, for all your effects, just send it there. I find that's, uh, that makes things a lot quicker. Yeah, then I've got, yet again, more white noise here. I think this is, um, this is a sample, I think. I can hear some vinyl crackle in there, so <laughs> that's a sample from somewhere. It sounds like a disco record. Same again, just... You know, side chain pretty hard to the side chain channel. With a tune like this, it sort of it seemed a little bare how it was. So um, I basically added a vocal sample, which I sort of uh, processed quite a lot. Um, you know, and uh, cut it up so it's not so obviously, you know, ripped from an a cappella. Um, and what I've done with that. I mean, it's not really good practice to use a pitch shifter because it generally sounds pretty rubbish, but I sort of put it on here and I just found that it, it kind of worked. Um, so what I've done to process this is I've got two copies of it and the first one... It's just... It's, that pitch shifter, it's limited um, a little bit, and yeah, I've just got a kind of tight-ish reverb on it to make it slightly wide, and then I've just EQ'd uh, where it's peaking. Um, I've just taken those out a little bit, and then the second one is just that's a lot wider. Um, and it's a lot more high passed it's got an EQ to sort of boost the top end on it and uh, yeah that's just to really sort of add a bit more width in the top end as it's sort of coming over the drop you know you want it to like you want it to really sort of like sound wide and sit above everything else um, so in the tune It just kind of adds that little extra, extra bit of stuff, you know, um, extra catchy little thing. 
let's have a look at the intro. Um. <laughs> Quite a lot going in there, to, sort of uh, going on in there to keep it interesting. Um, let's see, what I've done is I've, with the uh, automation, I've uh, filtered down the main loop and obviously the one underneath it as well. Just so it sort of like just adds a little bit of uh, you know interest in the track to have it cut up slightly differently and you know filtered down in the intro because if you just came in with your loop straight away it would get pretty boring pretty fast. I've got that and then also I've got this um, this is a sort of high pass kick and it's actually in the main bit of the tune but just a little quieter in the intro um, just to kind of make it a little easier to mix with um, and I've also got oh, this, this is quite interesting um, yeah I've got some white noise out of the Logic's ESP synth and literally all you have to do is turn down all the things and just turn up the noise and um, yeah, make sure you haven't got resonance on it and what I've done with that is sort of uh, take off all the bottom and a little bit of a really high top end I've got a tight reverb again CMX and then I've made this pattern in um, Effectrix, which basically it's it's got this phaser and a chorus on it to um, sort of just make it sound a little more like it's doing something rather than just a flat noise. And then I've put some stutter in, which uh, I've got set to like a sort of triplet, um, you know, three over eight, which. Yeah, when you uh, play it, you just get it cutting, and it just it just makes it sound more interesting than you know. Yeah, if you took that off, it would just just be white noise, which I'm sure everyone's bored of by now. I've got a, a low pass beat, which. Um, you know, I just I just took a bounce of the main sort of kick and snare, and um, yeah, that's that's really useful. Once you know what you're gonna do with your kick and snare, if you get a bounce of it, it's really useful to. You can um, I've got camel fat on that doing uh, band pass filter. Everything else is turned off, and so what that does is just. Just sort of build up. Adds a bit more tension, you know, like you think something's going to happen there. But I don't know, I like playing with people and making them think it's going to drop and it, it doesn't. Because uh, I find that kind of, yeah, that works in a club. I've combined, I've combined that with a high pass beat with a delay effect on it so when you put the two together you've got you know you've got the low end and the high end sort of coming together yeah I've got this uh, little sort of 80s bass sample which just filters in um, in myself just kind of adds to the, the texture of the intro <laughs> this is uh, it's quite 
sort of subtle. Um, it's just uh, sort of fairly standard, you know, disco-y disco -y brass stab that I've delayed. Um, just off a sample CD, so I should be allowed to use that. And what I've done is I've um, I've reverbed it quite a lot, and then uh, let me take the effect tricks off. Um, I've just reversed it into the main hit, and then I've put on some effect tricks with a stutter. And I've automated the mix on the stutter so it sort of gradually opens out. Um, and then, yeah, I've sent the main stab to our big reverb bus from before. And so you end up with uh, something a little more, more interesting than just, you know, just a straight hit on the. Uh, on the sort of start of every 16. What I've done with this is this is a this is like a, a sort of 80s kind of uh, op sound. Which I can't remember where I sampled it from, but. <laughs> added a touch of EQ, get rid of some stuff that I don't like, and again put a tight reverb on it, a bit more EQ, and that is a sidechain as well. And what I've done is, on a separate channel, automated some delay to sort of, uh, yeah, just, just give it something interesting towards the end of it, so it's not just doing the same thing over and over. Yeah, the plugin I've used to do that, I think, yeah, it's, um, it's actually just the Logic Echo plugin, which is just a really simple um, plugin where you can, uh, you can basically, I find it really useful for doing stuff like this. You just, you know, you just automate, you set the delay how you want, So you just set set the wet level, and then you can you know you can have it continue for as long as you want. So it's really good for making things bleed over into the next 16 bars or whatever. Um, and you can set like the color of the delay, so you can have a sort of more toppy delay if you want, but I'd sort of keep it relatively near the middle. Yeah, the middle breakdown uh, kind of, uh, you know, opted to sort of play my own stuff in to sort of, yeah, just give the tune a little break, um, the main loop, because people are just going to get bored of it if it's playing the whole time, so what I've done is I've played this in, which is basically a single note um, sampled from, I think, a Juno, and then played in, uh, played in the XS24 as chords. Um, and then I've layered it up with, uh, layered it up playing the same, just simple chords with um, this plugin called Strings Machine. Yeah, basically you've got you've got this big list here of all these different strings, and you can set up sort of two oscillators, and as it were, you know, they're just samples, but you can basically treat them individually and uh, pretty much it will give you like um, you can sort of get a really nice warm sound yeah it's, it's, it's a real analog 
real analog sound to it. And you know, once you put that under the sample pads, it sort of. That's literally just, um, that's just a Steinway sort of uh, Logic EXS default piano. Um, just doing a, a slightly, a slightly different chord, and yeah, a lot of top end added to it because they're quite dull those sounds. And uh, yeah, that yeah just adds a little bit of texture in the breakdown. Yeah, I've got this little uh, sort of uh, Gary Newman kind of electro-y kind of um, pad that uh, yeah, it's a sample from Juno. Uh, it just played in with a bit of a sort of pitch wobble, you know, automated in. I've uh, got this like sort of vocal effect which is just a, a tiny piece of vocal just looped up um, and what that's got on other than EQ and pitch shift to, to bed it in properly is um, I've got camel fat on it with you know in the flanger set to full um, a bit of distortion and uh, no the LFIs are turned off but yeah I've got that and then Effectrix doing quite a sort of harsh phaser on it with the whip set to full so it sort of really really sounds big um, which is uh, useful for breakdowns and with the output um, since we've gone through most of the main elements. With the output, I mean, all I've got, and this is what I generally just work with, is just a bit of uh, Logic's compressor, and then probably not strictly right, but Camel Crusher with everything turned off except the output, and it just clips to zero. You can see, the compressor's doing a little bit, not too much. Um, if you look on here, you can, you can see exactly what the camel crush is doing. It's just cutting off those uh, big peaks. And uh, it's probably doing a little bit too much, actually, truth be told. But, yeah, it sounds all right to me, so... Yeah, basically, I mean, I think people sort of really, uh, people really kind of think that there's some magic combo that you can put on your output that's going to make it sound amazing, and that is not the case at all. It's all about starting with some really good drums and, uh, you know, choosing the right sounds. I know people say this all the time, but it's true. You know, choose the right combination of sounds and you know what to get out of them, then, you know, you you shouldn't have to do much on your output. Um, I mean, this is just really simple bit of clipping and a little bit of compression, and that's it. Um, you know, generally, if there's anything you know major that needs doing, then you've really got to look at what's going on in the actual tune. Um, I mean, a mastering people say mastering, oh, they'll they'll sort it out, but. You know that's not the case either because there's there's only so much they can do, um, and it's it's gonna if it sounds bad to start with, you know they they're not gonna be able to improve it that much. So yeah, I'd really sort of work on what's going on in the content of the tune first. With this this version is the one that I will, um, you know, I'll pretty much play out. Um, Actually, if we can have a look over here, I've uh, yeah, I've already um, cut that 
This is the dub of it. just you know it's useful for uh, basically well having a mix with it apart from anything else it's really good um, generally do that off CD first just to uh, you know just to try it out um, <clears throat> before actually cutting it and then uh, yeah once I'm a bit more happy then I'm willing to sort of part with some money to, uh, to get it pressed and that's truly, you know, the best indicator of um, how things are going to sound on vinyl. When I sort of um, have a mix with it, with uh, maybe something similar, in a similar vein, you know, um, sort of be looking out for whether things jump out, um, certain sort of, uh, you know, harsh frequencies or something like that, or, you know, you may find that your tune sounds really bass light or something and uh, yeah I've been through uh, like my last single Obey um, I cut it four times because uh, yeah I wasn't quite happy with how it sounded um, I thought I was you know four times evidently um, and yeah I only got it right the sort of last time um, so yeah I mean it is it's it's sort of uh it's good sometimes just to you know do it off c d and uh just to try it out just before parting with um you know thirty five pounds um but yeah if you really wanna you know know how it's gonna translate to vinyl there's no substitute for cutting a dub and definitely recommend it um once uh you know you're starting to sort of play tracks out in a club. Yeah, that is that is uh, this version that I would have cut, and uh, what I'll do is I'll maybe you know ease off a little bit um, on the sort of uh, on the compression and the limiting um, before it gets mastered. I'll generally send two versions to the mastering engineer, but pretty much every time they'll send they'll they'll master the the pushed one because that's how you wanted it to sound originally um, and yeah they have no problem with doing that usually so yeah I don't know it will probably be this version that ends up coming out yeah I've been scientific and I will continue to be later but this is uh yeah it's been Mirador um, sort of my breakdown of it and uh, I hope you found it useful and if you like the tune, I'm sure it will be out in the shops fairly soon.